Greetings and welcome back to part 5 of making your own turn-based RPG. In this part we are going to set up the menu navigation and be able to attack the enemy by the end of this. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let's open up the battle controller and we're going to create a new event. It's going to be step and step and go ahead and drag in some code and we're going to be doing a lot of typing here. Some of it may make sense, some of it may not, but if you follow along by the end of it, you'll actually have a fully working, well, mostly working turn-based RPG, which, which is pretty good. And then you'll be able to modify it however you want. So we're going to comment that out and we're going to say if in combat. So this will only apply while we're actually fighting the enemy, which is really good. And we're going to set... We're going to be checking the keyboard to be able to navigate through. Uh, if you wanted to navigate with the arrow keys or with a gamepad or something, you could actually put that right here, or you could uh, accept them all by using these two bars, and that means OR, which you can actually type OR here, but I'm a C++ Java programmer, so I use these two bars. And what, what those mean is you can set up another keyboard check if you wanted to use space or you know left arrow key or, or a gamepad. You could say, if they press any of these, do this. We're going to be using the A for now. And we're going to be using D to go right. And we're going to say inside of this, once they press A, if battle menu selection minus one, I always forget this. <clears throat> we need another parenthesis at the beginning because we're subtracting this and we want that to be all one value. It is less than zero. Battle menu selection equals. And this is going to equal the array length 1D of the battle menu minus one. And I will explain this to you guys as soon as we actually run this because it, then it will make a whole lot more sense. But if that's not the case, we're just going to subtract one from that. And we're going to say pretty much do the exact same thing for D. And we're going to do a similar check here, which we're going to do two parentheses. Battle menu selection plus one this time, and it's greater than 1D. Minus one. So follow along for now, and I'll actually show you exactly what I'm doing here and why we have to do it this way in just a little bit. Okay, so now we can use A and D to move left and right between the menus, which is great. Now we're going to say selecting an enemy. So when we want to fight, this is what we're going to do. We're going to check to see if we've pressed A, A and D the correct amount of times to set it uh, to, to zero, because that is going to be our attack option, and keyboard check pressed VK space. So if you've pressed space bar, which is what we're using, and you want to attack someone, we're going to do one check real quick, and it's going to be if you're not already selecting an enemy. We're going to set selecting enemy always want to capitalize properly, equal to true. Otherwise, we need to check to make sure that we have the energy sufficient to be able to actually do an attack, because otherwise uh, you could just attack, press spacebar as fast as you can, and then you would win every battle, and that would just be boring. So we're going to set a couple things equal to true, and we're going to adjust the sprite index, to her shooting right, and we're going to set the image speed, because we want this now to play, uh, not true, sorry, looking at the wrong thing, and we're going to set her image, or her current energy, sorry guys, I cannot talk right now, or type, two R's, current energy <laughs> equal to zero, so when she attacks, it uses up all of her energy, which just makes sense. And then we're going to say selecting an enemy is equal to false and is defending equals to false. Because if she was defending, we no longer want her to be able to get that boost from defending. So let's go ahead and press OK here. Go into Sarah, and we're going to add in a new event, possibly one you haven't seen before. It's an other, and it's animation end. So what this does is it actually knows exactly when the last image of a sprite 
has played and is about to re reloop, and then it calls this. So we can use this to actually damage the enemy at the end of our animation, not just when we press spacebar. So we're going to be saying if player is attacking, which we just set to true when we press spacebar. So at the very end of her animation, uh, we're going to set the image speed and index equal to zero because we don't want her to play any more of the animation and we wanted to go back to the first one. And then we're going to actually deal some damage. So with that enemy ID, we're going to deal damage minus enemy ID dot defense. And we're going to set selecting enemy equal to false and player attacking equal to false. Let's go ahead and press play and you'll be able to see now you can actually navigate the menu and attack the player or attack <laughs> attack the enemy. We don't want to attack the player. So I press D, I go right, I press I go press A, I go left, which is great. At the end on either end here, if I press D right now, I'm going to switch back over to attack. That's what the whole checking if battle menu selection is less than or greater than array length. And the reason that we needed to check if it was greater than or less than with uh, the minus one is because in the battle controller, you can see here, ooh, that's Sarah. We have this battle menu that is three items inside of this array, which we know is three. And when we actually call the code to say array length right here, it's going to return three, but zero, one, two. There's no three. If we set battle menu three, it's going to throw an out of bounds exception and you're going to get a fatal error and the game will crash. Uh, array length returns the length, but it doesn't start counting at zero. So it's important to always do minus one or plus one, on, depending on what you're checking because that array length function returns how many there are, but doesn't start at zero. So now in here, we have chosen to attack. I'm going to press spacebar. It draws this right here, press spacebar again, and we get a fatal error, which is always fun. So line 24 in the step event of battle controller, let me do a quick check here. I must have misspelled at least one thing wrong. Ah, maybe you caught that. So dot current was nothing dot current energy is what we needed to check because Sarah doesn't have a dot doesn't have a current variable it doesn't mean anything maybe later but not right now okay press spacebar again animation plays then the monster takes damage which is awesome in more advanced versions of this I've said that at the end of the animation I actually create an instance of like of an arrow or a fireball or something and then that fireball would fly over here when it hits the enemy then they take damage that's all style doesn't matter Chrono Trigger Final Fantasy retro games they all did it unique ways your game can do it whatever way you want this shows you that you could do it by just pressing spacebar they could immediately take damage or you can wait until they are all done there, and that's okay. That allows us to actually be able to attack the enemy, which is awesome, and navigate the menu, which is a pretty big step. Uh, what's left to do in here is to set up the rest of the options, so defending and escaping. And so let's go ahead and get those set up. So if we wanted to defend, what we need to do is say, if we're on the defend option, which is gonna be one, right? and keyboard ooh, check pressed vk space so if we wanted to defend we need to go over to defend and then we're going to set up the code to do that um i wasn't too thoroughly happy with the way this works out but you guys will see what i'm trying to do and then you can set up exactly what you want to do yourself so we're actually going to say um the Defending only costs half of the max energy that you need to do it. So it only requires half. And then is defending equals true. And OBJ Sarah. And you, you need to make sure you subtract the energy from Sarah. Otherwise, she gets it for free. And I'm using variables here instead of just saying, like, you know, 50 or something. Because if her max energy ever changed, well, then you'd want to, this would automatically fix that for you and so it makes it a lot nicer last thing is escape which no real warrior would ever run away from battle right i mean pfft. yeah i did that all the time okay keyboard check 
press. Let me scroll down, make sure you guys can see that. And VK space. So, and we need to make sure that she's got the energy for this. So it's greater than or equal to. And I'm going to say that trying to run away also only costs half energy. This is something you could very easily change if you wanted to cost full energy. And the difficulty, you can also very, very easily, I'll show you where I do that in just a second. So we need to subtract the energy from her. And then we're going to set up the difficulty of running away. So we're going to use I random, which gives me uh, I random range, which gives me a integer from a range to a range. So we're going to say 0 and 3 and just say equals to 1. So basically what that means is it's going to pull out a random number when you press escape. If it equals 1 and there's a 25% chance that it will, then you will run away successfully. Uh, we're going to say ran away equals true. We're going to use a specific Boolean variable here. And then we're going to set is defending equals false. And we're doing this because later we'll set it up so that when you run away, you don't get any of the experience, gold, loot, or whatever. Because you didn't defeat the monster, you shouldn't get any bonuses from it. And the last thing is undoing selection. So this is just a, a nice thing that uh, if they press escape or if they don't want to attack or whatever the case is, while they're selecting an enemy... It'll just go right back to uh, not selecting an enemy. So that, that way you can press B if you want to actually use an item instead of attack or whatever the case may be. So that is defending escaping, which is exactly what we want. Now the very last thing we need to set up is actually going to be uh, in the parent for the character. And it's going to be a step event that actually increases the stamina of Sarah because otherwise you'll find out when you try to attack more than once is she used up all of her energy the very first time she fought and it's not increasing because we don't tell it to anywhere so <clears throat> increase stamina so if we are <laughs> if we are in combat and we are not currently attacking because we don't want to increase stamina while we're attacking. We've got to wait until that's done. We're going to say if current energy is less than max energy. And this is a rate that I just came up with, 0.25. Uh, you can come up with whatever rate you so desire. This is a, a this would be a difficulty change if you wanted to make it more or less, depending on whatever you wanted to do. Um, this will make it so that she actually increases her stamina over time, and I forgot to print these right here, and that way she can continue to attack again. So let's press play, and now we should have, for the most part, a fully functioning turn-based game. Uh, we have a few more things to set up, which we'll do in the next part of the tutorial, but we can press attack, animation goes through, and nothing. Hmm, strange. Why are we not recovering stamina, you might ask? That is an excellent question. And the problem is that in the step event, let's go ahead and... So we could have created the step event in Sarah or in the in the parent. Either way, it would have been fine. Uh, if we do it in the parent, because we already have a step event here, we need to say event inherited to actually draw in that code that we wrote in the parent, which is fine because if you ever wanted to add more characters, that would make it a lot easier. Now we press spacebar, we attack, damage, stamina, or energy, whatever we're calling it. Now when it's full, we can attack once more. And then we can kill the enemy and, well, not really. We will set up killing the enemy, setting up a way to destroy him and be able to take damage ourselves. We'll also set up the um, actually escaping and running away. There's a few more things to do, but for the most part, we are getting close to the end, guys. 
Uh, I thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like or subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, problems, or suggestions for other videos, leave them in the comments below or send me a message. I love to hear from you guys. So until next time, I will see you guys later.